Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at the second example related to use rate user. Instead of making use of a simple state and action, we are going to be using a state object and an action object. This is also the pattern that is going to seem familiar to all the Redux users. Let's begin. I'm going to create a new file called counter2.js. To save us time, I will copy over the code from counter1 and make the necessary changes. First, the component name. It has to be counter2. Next, we convert our simple numeric state into an object. So const initial state is now going to be an object. I'm going to have a property called first counter set to zero. In the JSX, we now need to render this first counter property. So count is going to be count dot first counter. So count itself refers to the entire state object and we only need the first counter value. So count dot first counter. Finally, we convert our simple string action into an object as well. The object is going to contain a property called type, which is a string. So curly braces, type, increment, type, decrement, and type, reset. And in the reducer function, the switch expression is now going to be action.type. So action refers to the entire object and we access the type property. Finally, for increment and decrement actions, we now need to return the new state object. So return an object where first counter is state dot first counter plus one. And for decrement, return first counter is going to be state dot first counter minus one. And that is pretty much it. The component state and action are now objects. In app.js, I'm going to comment out counter1 and include counter2. Let's now test the code. I click on increment, the value increases. Click on decrement, the value decreases. Reset and the count value is set back to zero. So use red user with state and action as objects. Now the obvious question is, what is the advantage of using this particular pattern? Well, I can think of two scenarios where it could be helpful. The first scenario is concerning the value by which we need to increment or decrement the counter. Right now, you can see that the value is one. What if we wanted to add two more buttons that could increment or decrement the value by five? Well, that is easy when the action is an object. Right now, our action object has just the one property, which is action type. We can add a second property called value, which should be the number to increment or decrement the counter. So for the existing buttons, we add a value property set to one. Value one. I'm going to quickly format this. And now I will also duplicate the two buttons, but this time set the value property to five. The text is also going to be increment five, decrement five. Back in the reducer function, Instead of the hard-coded value of one, we specify action.value. Let's save the file and test it out. I click on increment and the counter value increases by one. Click on decrement, the counter value decreases by one. Click on increment five and the counter value increases by five. Click on decrement five and the value decreases by five. And of course, reset still works as expected. So by making use of action as an object, 
we can use additional data in the reducer function. That is the first scenario. For the second scenario, we are going to talk about state as an object. Suppose you wanted to maintain two different counters. That turns out to be really simple if your state is an object. You simply add another property to your state. Let's add second counter and the initial value for this counter is 10. To change the second counter value, I'm going to create two more switch cases. Increment 2 and decrement 2. These are for the second counter. Now we have two properties in the state object but changing only one at a time. To get the expected output, we have to modify the return statements to merge the state properties. And we have already seen how to do that using the spread operator. So within the object, we spread the state object dot 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 state and then overwrite the appropriate property. First counter set to state dot first counter plus action dot value. Let's add this for the other cases as well. In the render function, we can now add the JSX pertaining to the second counter. Second counter, and this is going to be first counter. Count dot second counter. I'm also going to add two more buttons to increment this second counter. Let's copy the first two buttons. I'm going to add a div tag and paste it within the div tag. This is going to be increment counter two, decrement counter two. Dispatch is going to be increment two and decrement two, corresponding to these actions. All right, let's save the file and test this out. First counter working as expected. Second counter, also working as expected. I click on reset and both of them are set to their initial value. So by using state as an object, you're able to keep track of two different counters. So what I want you to take away from this second example is that we can maintain both the state and action as objects. By using action as an object, we are able to pass additional data to the reducer function. By using state as an object, we are able to keep track of multiple state variables. Now this approach of maintaining multiple variables in a single state object is suited when dealing with global state. But right now, we are dealing with local state. And when dealing with local state, we have another way to keep track of multiple variables. Let's take a look at that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.